Hi folks, Tyler Capozzi here. Today I'm going to be going over subtitles and what I have found to be the best font choice, color, etc. for setting those up for use in film and video. I've done quite a few over the years for both personal use and broadcast and this is what I found to work best. The font that we're going to use is called Altejas Grotesque that is available for free at dafont.com. Link for that is below in the description. Note that this is a sans serif font. Difference between the two, serif has fancy flares on the edges and sans serif is more of a bare bones basic font so it's a little easier to read. So that's why we're using that. So here we have a behind the scenes segment for our Ecuador trip and let's just play through this first part where I'll be putting the subtitle. So that is just me asking him what it is and he's telling me that it is a dragon's blood tree. So first let's get the playhead lined up with right where I start talking. Okay so right there you can just start hearing me talk and to add the title we will click on file, new, and title. And I generally like to write what is said for the name of it. That way, number one, you only write it once. And number two, there's no guessing as to what it is. If you just put like subtitle one, well, what is subtitle one? We don't know. So I like to put what is actually said. So that was just me asking him what it is. So I said, tell me what it is, please. I will select that and copy it. Click on OK and I will now click and drag right here on the title safe margin. That is this inner guideline right here. You want to stay within that boundary, especially for broadcast purposes. And now I'll go ahead and paste it, select all, and center it. I'm going to leave it at font size 100 and then let's go ahead and change it to our Alte Haas font right here. And then hold down command and then hold down shift and drag it down so it lines up with the bottom title safe margin. Perfect. And for the color of it, we're going to use a slightly darker than the bottom corner of yellow and the RGB code for that is 229-229-0. Okay, so we have a nice yellow. And the reason I'm using yellow is I used white for a while, but I eventually had people complaining that they couldn't see it on TV. So yellow is um, definitely more contrasty. So that's why we're using that. And in the rare event that there is a yellow background and you wouldn't be able to see it, we will go ahead and add an outer stroke for it with a size of 17. So now even if there is a yellow background, you'll still be able to see it because of that border there. So as you can see, that's pretty easy to read and stands out quite well. So we can now close this window and it will appear right here in our project window. I will drag it down to our playhead, which is already lined up with me starting to talk. And I stop talking right about there. And we'll drag the edge of it over to line up with it. Okay, so now let's go ahead and render that out and play it back. Perfect. Now we'll do his, and since we're maintaining the same formatting, we can simply copy and paste. But do note, if you are in Premiere Pro, and this is pivotal, you cannot simply copy and paste this one. Because if you copy and paste this, it's going to change the same one. So if you if I copy and paste this, put it over here, type in what he says, it's going to change this one right here to the same thing. So you have to copy and paste from the project window. So I will copy that, but before I do, let's figure out what he says. Okay, and we'll line our playhead up with where he st starts talking. And we'll copy it and paste it and type in what he says. And then select that and copy that. Then we'll double click it. That will open up the text window. And I'll simply select all that and paste it. So that can save you some serious time by copying and pasting. 
and then we'll just drag it right down in and line our edge up and if you've got two people talking right back to back or two subtitles that are really close let's say that one went all the way over to here it's generally a good idea to have at least one frame of no subtitles in between them it makes it a little easier to read so I'll now go ahead and render that out and let's take a look perfect now if we want to double check our safe margins if you don't have these guidelines right here just click on the wrench icon and click on safe margins that's how you get your title safe zone to appear I generally leave that turned on so there you have it that's what I found to be the best option for subtitles in film and video I hope you found that valuable thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time